night, even in the deep, there is light. Glowing ammonites rise from the abyss. Ammonites are mollusks related to octopus and squid. These scaphytids are no bigger than a human hand. For weeks, they've been gathering in the coastal depths. In the deep, these lights may help lure plankton as food. But tonight, they serve a different purpose. They've been drawn to the surface to mate. And soon, there are thousands in each shoal. triggers neighbor, creating waves of bioluminescence. They have complex nervous systems controlling light-producing cells called photocytes. The males jostle for a place around the larger females. Clues from their displays tell her who is the fittest and who is the best mate. As couples entwine, they coordinate their light displays. If he can't match her precise rhythm, he'll be rejected. But there is perfect synchrony. This pair will now spawn and help produce the next generation. After fertilization, the females enter the shallows to release their eggs. As with most cephalopods, breeding is the final act of their short lives. By morning, these lights will have flickered and died. This magical night will be their last. They move by jet propulsion, but mastering new swimming skills is not easy. Until now, these pools have provided a nursery. Under the midday sun, the water in the pool starts to evaporate. If it dries out completely, they will all die. But everything is not lost. Baby ammonites can do something remarkable. Each makes its own bid for freedom, forcing them together. The combined effort means they effectively move as one. Each 
is carried along on this tiny living tide, pushed over the bare rock by those behind. Eventually, escaping to deeper water. Now they wait for the rising tide. that escaped the rock pools, less than one in a hundred has survived several months at sea. But these few have been particularly lucky. Ocean currents have carried them to an ideal place to live. Seagrass beds off the coast of Europe. Here, Shoals of ammonites occur in a surprising variety of sizes and shapes. six-foot-long giant is Baculites, which feeds near the sea floor. And almost matching it in size, Diplomoceros, shaped like a giant paperclip. flourish here thanks to an abundance of food. Plankton, small crustaceans, some even eat fish. These hatchlings are beginning to acquire the extraordinary shape they will have when they are mature. The protruding spiral identifies them as young Nostoceros. These are adult Nostoceros. They favor the sea floor in deeper waters. have been thriving in these prehistoric oceans for almost 400 million years. There are thousands of species. They are one of the most successful groups of animals to have ever lived. Flourishing in the warm, temperate seas and even the coldest waters at the poles. Tiger ammonites, sphenodiscus. Every year, huge shoals of females come up from deep water and travel towards the coast. They have all recently mated, and each is now carrying hundreds of fertilized eggs. The eggs must be laid in the shallows. 
Tiger Ammonites are themselves hunters. The combination of a streamlined profile and a powerful siphon enables them to shoot through the water at great speed. Clopidens has broad, rounded teeth that easily crack the ammonite shell, releasing the air that keeps them buoyant. Without it, they sink helplessly to the seabed. Before the ammonites can escape, the motorsaw disables as many as it can. Finally, time to tuck in. Globby Dens may have killed dozens. But even this makes only a small impact on the overall numbers of Ammonites. Most of the shoal have survived and continue on their journey to their spawning grounds. The rocky seabed here has many cracks and crevices. Ideal places for attaching the ammonites' precious egg sacs. <laughs> 